All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's TJ. Welcome to Kayak USA. Last week's video, I introduced you guys to my latest project here on the channel. We're gonna be converting this old truck bed into a pull behind overland style camper. We're gonna add a rooftop tent, ladder rack, a bunch of really cool gear on the inside. I mocked everything up in last week's video. So if you wanna go back and check that out, if you haven't seen it, I do suggest you go check it out. I kind of go over why we went this route with this build and what we're looking to do with this project. But today's video is gonna be kind of the beginning video of the build. So we're gonna pull this bed off today. As you can see, I did start a little bit off camera and it's, I wasn't really sure this was gonna work. So I come out and made sure it was gonna work before I started filming, but I think we got it figured out. So it's not completely on, but as you can see, I did add a really cool bumper to this build. It's kind of just tacked in place right now. We got to get this bed off today and finish welding it up. But I think that is going to be perfect. I really wanted a fold out tailgate like this. I'm going to show you why and where I got this thing in just a minute. But yeah, so today's video, the plan is we're going to pull this bed off. We're going to do some rust repair on the frame. I want to work on the tongue some. I want to finish welding up this rear bumper and add a few things to the back end of this and, and get it prepped up for the floor. And I'm hoping if everything goes as planned today, we can start putting the floor in this. We do have to do a spray and bed liner. I've got a spray, uh, some sort of undercoating spray that we're gonna do to the frame before we put the bed back on to kind of protect everything up under there. That way this is a complete build from the ground up. And yeah, that's gonna be it. So let me grab the camera really quick. I'm gonna walk you guys around and show you this really, really cool bumper that I got for this thing. The lighting kind of sucks on this side of my garage, so I'm gonna try to get some good angles of this for you. But here's where I'm at right now. I've got the front kind of weighed down. As you can see, I've got like a 50 pound dumbbell here. I've got the box. That is actually my tongue box off my double jet ski kayak trailer build we did. I'm kind of using it right now to make sure it's gonna be the right dimensions and stuff. I plan on mounting the spare tire here and I've got everything weighted down right here because that bumper is kind of wanting to make this trailer pop a wheelie right now because there's no weight at all up here, which is fine. By the time we're done, we'll have plenty of weight up there. We're gonna have our solar, our batteries, our spare tire jacks and stuff like that. So it should distribute really good, but we gotta get this bed off. We're gonna do some framework and I wanted to show you guys this bumper, how awesome this thing turned out. And this bumper is not even made for this Mazda bed. It's actually made for an older model Jeep Cherokee, but it's got the little latch here where you can lock it and unlock it. And you hit this button, if I can do this one hand, and you can swing it out. And I can still open up the tailgate. It's got a little fold down table there. I'm, I can't do all this one hand, so I'm gonna have to set you guys back on the tripod, but, and it's got a heavy duty latch. It goes back in latches in and then you can lock it with this and it keeps it from like you can't bump this and accidentally open it let me try to swing this thing open really quick i got the weight up there so it should be fine last night i didn't have any weight on there and i opened it up and as soon as i opened it up the whole trailer popped up in the front because i added that roto pack and it's full of water so it's adding more weight out here on the end but check this out we can open the tailgate got plenty of clearance so there's a fold down table here that we're gonna be able to utilize. We're gonna have that 270 awning wrapping this thing all the way around. And I've got the game plan figured out for the bed rack system, the tent and the awning. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be different than what I showed you guys last week, but I think you are gonna freaking love it. We're gonna be able to run a bunch of gear in here, low profile tent, high telescopic, awning on the side. It's going to be really cool. I'm waiting on the stuff to get in and we're going to start adding that cool stuff. Today's, like I said, this week's video, we've actually got to get the base work done in preparation for that. We got to get the bed liner sprayed. We got to do a lot of other stuff to get this stuff to work. But I absolutely love this bumper being the first, you know, kind of mod to this thing is going to be awesome. If I can get the latch on there with one hand, I'm trying not to put too much weight back here because like I said, I just got this tacked into place right now. I don't have it exactly welded securely yet, but nice big swing open. We got our tailgate here. This thing is gonna be freaking awesome. If y'all are interested in a bumper like this, I do wanna say that I reached out to the company where I got this. I got this from hookroad.com. If you've never been to their website, they've got an amazing website. 
You can kind of go on there and put your specific vehicle, scroll through all of the stuff they have. They carry a ton of front bumpers, rear bumpers, rock sliders, all kind of cool stuff, and it's heavy duty. I actually, uh, a couple of years ago, I ordered their front and rear bumper kit for my Jeep, my JK. Everybody loved them. They got a super good heavy duty powder coating on them. They're really nice quality. And I've got a coupon code. So I reached out, told them what I was doing with this and they sent me a coupon code. It'll be linked below. Just use that link, go check it out. See if they got something you like. And yeah, this thing is really cool. I forgot to mention this bumper actually came with a spare tire mount for the back end back here. But as you can see, I went with the rotor pack back here. I kind of mounted it up where the spare tire would go. I'm trying to keep that tongue weight and the rear end weight kind of where it needs to be. You want weight on your tongue when you're building a trailer like this. You want at least a couple of hundred pounds. You don't ever want it really heavy in the back because it's gonna cause it to drift while you're trying to pull it down the highway. So we're, I'm gonna keep that in mind as I'm building this out. I am gonna use their tire mount though. This is what this is. It used to, you know, it would mount back here. You put this thing on here and you can mount your spare tire. I'm gonna relocate this to the front. We're gonna figure that out once we get this body off today, uh, where we're gonna be able to put some supports to kind of carry a, a heavy tire up front, get the weight balance where it needs to be and all that. But yeah, so I'm gonna, if you can't tell, I am cold. It is really cold outside today. Uh, I've got the heater going behind you guys. It's off right now, but I'm actually using my tent diesel heater in here. My little electric one just can't keep up. I'm an Alabama boy. I ain't used to this cold weather. So I'm gonna run some diesel heaters in here. It might be a little loud in a minute, but we're gonna pop this uh, bed bolts out, get my engine hoist over here and see if we can pull this off, set it on some stands over here on the other side of the shop, and then we can start focusing on this frame today. All right, y'all, the bed has been removed. It only had four bolts holding it on. We're gonna go back with the eight once we put the bed back on here, but it come off pretty easily. I used my engine lift and it just kind of pulled right off there. I got it put on my kayak cart. I'm filming with a GoPro right now and you, it might be a different audio than regular because I've got a heater going in here and I'm trying to keep it warm so I can keep working out here today. But let me show you the frame and then how I've got the bed set up over here. So first of all, that kayak cart, I use it for everything. If y'all haven't built you one yet, you definitely need to. I've got the DIY build on my channel. I use it for everything, not just kayaks. I mean, I've, I've been putting that thing through its paces over the last four or five years, but now it is a bed rack. <laughs> it's holding my little Mazda bed on here. That way I can move it around in the garage and when it comes time for me to work on it, I'll be able to get to it. I think we might even leave it on the kayak cart when we put the floor in. That way I can work on it and have the frame maybe drying or something. But here is the frame. The frame looks really good. The rust is all just, there's a little bit of surface rust, but other than that, it looks really good. The goal for today is, like I said, so here is the, the rear bumper, the way I got it mounted. And I told you guys I had it just tacked up, but I did, I, I threw a few beads down here whenever I got the bumper exactly how I wanted it when the bed was on. But the main reason I wanted to take the bed off is because I want to clean this up and I wanna weld it completely across the top because this was the best way for me to figure out how to make this bumper part of the frame. I didn't wanna do a bolt on because, you know, when you're taking it through the woods and stuff, I didn't want any shifting to happen or have to worry about loose bolts. 
once it's welded on, it'll be part of the frame and it'll make me feel better, especially when I'm towing something in the receiver back here that is all one unit. I plan to also run a bead across here. We're gonna weld it. I've got it tacked up under here, but we're gonna weld this whole thing. And I do know that there's better ways to do this, but I'm trying to use the stuff that's in my shop already. I didn't wanna go buy a new steel. This is, I believe, 11 gauge, two inch angle iron that I use. And it's heavy duty. We're only spanning like eight inches right here. So it's not that far off the frame. But I knew, you know, I knew some of you guys was, you should have used something more heavy duty. I got this already in the shop. I didn't want to run out and buy new stuff. So if this, you know, if it ever bends, which I highly doubt is ever going to happen, but if I have issues in the future, I can always get back up under here and maybe run some box tubing or something instead of that angle. But I think it'll be fine. We're going to wire wheel this whole frame today, get it cleaned up. And then for the tongue up here, I've got some mesh left over here. And I think I've got enough left. I think I do anyway. There's a, a, a half a sheet, I believe. But I want to see if I can use the rest of that mesh right here on the front of this. So we're going to cut this off. This is the old tunnel where the drive shaft used to go up under the truck. We don't need that and it'll give us more room across the front. But as for this little A area right here, I wanna mesh it kind of like I did this trailer here. See that? If y'all watch the channel, you know what I'm talking about, but I, I wire mesh me a platform when we built that trailer. I wanna put that wire mesh on the bottom up here. That way, when I add stuff in the future, we'll have something for it to sit on if we do any boxes or, I gotta figure out where we're gonna mount that little heater that thing's chugging away. I don't know how loud it is on camera, but there's my little camp heater. Full of diesel. That thing will run all day long off of that little bit of diesel fuel that's in it. And it's pumping it up pretty good. The temperature's actually, is. I need to cut it off in just a minute. Let's see. It's up to 68 degrees in here. Yeah, I need to cut it off in a minute. But it, it cools off really quick, especially when it's in the 20s outside. So I may just turn it down low and let it keep chugging along. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna rip out the grinder. We're gonna grab the wire wheel. We're gonna knock this down the best we can. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some beads back here, make sure the bumper is, you know, secure. And then we're gonna start spraying this thing down today. Hopefully it'll be finished by the time this video is over. All right guys, so it is the next day. Uh, I actually got up and went to work this morning. I've got the trailer completely painted, but I think I lost the footage or the SD card corrupted on me painting it last night. So I wanna show you guys the completed frame. I think we're done with the framework for now. Now we gotta move on to the body. I got some body work to do on the bed here. I'm gonna show you that. That'll be probably for next week's video. And look at this big old shiner I got. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you, I got this engine hoist behind me, the one that you guys watched me. I used it to remove the bed from the frame in this video, but I went to move this big old green pole back here. Uh, I made that a long time ago so that I could use this hoist to get the tents on and off my truck in the shop by myself. And I had it propped up on the wall behind the hoist. And when I moved the hoist, wham, hit me right in the face. Look at that. I've got a big old whelp right there. I can feel a big old knot coming up. I might have a black eye next week, but anyway, 
uh, y'all missed me getting smacked in the face with a, a pole and you missed me painting the bed liner on this frame. So I'm gonna walk you guys around it. I really do, I, I'm really happy with the way this thing is turned out. Once we get the aggressive wheels and tires on there, this is gonna be an awesome setup. So I'm gonna walk you guys around that. I've got the bed set over here on the side. I'm gonna show you the little bit of welding we gotta do to the bed, a little bit of body work, and then we're gonna be moving on. I think by next week's video, we're gonna be adding really cool stuff to this build, not just doing the frame and the body work. So here is the back end. I absolutely love this bumper, guys. I'm so glad that I went with this one. I love the molly panel look that they've got on the back. I love how they mixed in the round tubing with the square tubing on the bumper at the bottom. I think it really looks good. It fits the project and the look that I'm going for. I got everything welded up, these little brackets that I fabricated out of that angle iron. Everything, I got up under here and I welded every bit of this all the way down through here. Got this side done the same way and it is solid. I mean, I don't think we're ever gonna have any issues with this. I've got it where you can just swing it open, open it up, drop the tailgate down on the back on the inside. That thing is awesome. Don't forget to check my link in the promo code below if y'all wanna add a bumper like this or they've got a ton of different styles. Just go to their website and flip through and check them all out. But I really do, I love the way they did the round tube with the square tube and the look of this is really cool. But I cut a bunch of extra stuff that was hanging off the frame before I painted it. I got rid of that, remember that crossbar that was right here with the big curve. I got it cut off, got our wire mesh down. That is nice. I can't wait to add the, sprint, the front spare tire. I will end up having to do a little bit more welding on this, but it's gonna have to be after we put the bed back on here because I'm not sure how far off to, to put my bracket. But what I wanna do is incorporate this bad boy right here, somewhere right in here, so that the spare tire can kind of rest on top of that wire mesh there. I think it'll look really good. And if you're curious on the coating that I use for these frames or these trailers, I use this right here, Rust-Oleum spray-in truck bed coating. And I got the roll-on stuff here. And we're fixing to have to use it probably next week's video. We're gonna get to work on the actual box before I pair it back up with the frame. I've gotta push the frame outside for a few days and focus on this because I had to notch it. You see these big notches right here. In order to get the frame extended so I could run that bumper, I had to notch that roll pan. So I gotta weld that up. And I think what I'm gonna do is we're, we're wrapping this bed anyway. I gotta do a little bit of body work but it's gonna be wrapped on the sides and the back. But I think down here, we're gonna paint it with bed liner to match, just this little pocket right here all the way down. And I think I'm gonna paint the front too the same way. I don't think we're gonna wrap the front because it's mostly gonna be hidden anyway. So all of this will get that same black bed liner. And I can't wait to show you all the wrap that I picked out. It, it's gonna look so sick behind that Tacoma. I think this trailer is gonna go down to be one of my coolest builds ever. I've had this in my mind for so long now. I, if for me to find this trailer or truck bed already turned into a trailer on Facebook Marketplace like I did, I think it was meant to be. I've had this in my mind for so long. You, you guys, we are gonna trick this thing out with so much cool stuff. I'm talking a shower, power, pull out fridge. It's gonna be completely loaded down. And I wanna get some help from you guys. I want to name this project, and what I want to do is, I, it needs a really cool name, like something, I don't know, it, it's an old retro style Mazda truck bed that's turned into an overland camper. It's, you guys know the gist, it's gonna have the rooftop tent, the awning, but I need a really cool name for this. So what I want you to do is, in the comment section up under this video, leave me some cool names. It can involve the Mazda, since we're making it out of an old 87 Mazda, a truck bed camping, I don't know. Just, I'm tr I've am i been racking my mind here lately trying to figure out a really cool name to call this build and I can't come up with anything. So y'all let me know and I'll tell you what I'll do. Whoever, whichever name I end up going with, y'all just leave it. It's gotta be this video in the comments up under this video. Start leaving me some names. The name that I end up going with, whoever the first person is who says it, I'll pin that name at the top of the comment section uh, in this video 
and I'll send you guys out a mystery tackle box. So let me know, as long as you're in the US, if I can ship it to you, I'll ship it to you. So, but let me know, I need some good names. I think this, this project's gonna be too cool for it not to have its own really cool name. And you guys always, you kill it, you know, in the past helping me name stuff. So except for the banana boat, I remember, I don't know how long some of you guys have been here, but uh, I told you guys I wanted to name my kayak years ago, my yellow Hobie when I first got it. And I said, it can be anything that doesn't have to do with bananas. And we voted on it and it ended up being called the banana boat. <laughs> so anyway, just go crazy. Give me some cool names for this build. I hope y'all come up with something really cool. I'll pin whoever I pick at the top of the comments and that's what we'll start calling this build and I'll send you out a mystery tackle box. This build is gonna be awesome. Next week, the frame is done for now until we can get the bed finished and it back on. And then we'll probably end up having to pull the bed on and off a few times, to be honest, to get everything exactly how I want it. But next week's video, we are gonna focus on the bed. We're gonna do a little bit of body work, a little bit of welding. I may need to flip it on its side so we can undercoat the bottom and fix some rust holes that are in the bed. But that is gonna be next week's video. Uh, for some of you guys that are watching right now, I, I've noticed the analytics on my channel. A lot of you guys are watching these, especially these builds when I do these projects. And you may think you're subscribed, but you're not subscribed. I've got like 70% of the people who come back every single Monday at six o'clock to watch my videos. I can see the numbers and see the people who are coming back to watch, but you're not subscribed. And it really would help me out a ton if you would just hit that subscribe button. It'll boost my channel up, it'll help more people get to watch my content, it'll grow me. And maybe one day, if I get big enough, I can quit having to get up, go to work every morning, and I can stay here and make some cool stuff, make more content for you guys. But for, for as many of y'all that are coming back every single Monday and you're not subscribed yet, I found out the hard way I watch a certain channel every single week and he mentioned that and I checked and I wasn't subscribed. YouTube just recommends my channel to you because you watch all my videos and you don't even realize that you're not subscribed. So check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna see these videos a little bit earlier than everyone else, I upload every Monday at six. But my members, if you click that join button, you become a member. My members get to see these videos a few days ahead of y'all. So you wanna watch them a little bit early, you can join, become a member of the channel. I really appreciate all the support and I will catch you guys next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.